sex. Right, I just get that on. Right. Just for, it, just for, it, for the fuel coming on. Right. And if I won't share it now, it'll. Yeah. See you in a bit. Okay. I just wait for the fuel coming on. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries. So, where are you from? Hartlepool? In, uh, well, I was I lived in Hartlepool from when I was um, eight year old till I was 18. Oh, so, yeah. we just before the Headlands, Central Park, I lived there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, how, did you go to the Catholic club boxing? No, I went to Headland. Yeah, right. I went. I went. I went to Headland. The Headland. Oh, uh, the bull, they bullied me, so I packed in. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. well, Sounds yeah, about right. We're going to start then. So, welcome to the Tap Man Show. We've got the absolute the biggest ever celebrity on here. We've got Savannah Marshall from Hartlepool. <laughs> She's held the WBO title from 2020 middleweight. Uh, she became the first British female. World champion in the championships. Uh, she's got the record as best active female middleweight. So there's the only boxer to have defended, defeated Clarissa Shields. We'll talk about that. Um, and you got a gold at the Commonwealth. Uh, Savannah, can I just what I usually do because you're from Hartlepool when I'm, I'm there for myself? Mm -hmm. Can we go back to when you were a little kid? What was it like um, at home when you got your siblings and that? So, um, I was born in 91, so I'm right. a 90s girl. Um, I've got an older sister who's 13 years older than me. So, basically, right. she kind of, like, helped bring me up. Right. I've always been really close to my sister. And I've got a younger brother who's 18 months younger than me. Right. So, and I, I'm from, I'm from um, Millbank Road in Hartlepool, which it's quite... Uh, a rough area of Hartlepool. Yeah. So, um, growing up, uh, no offence to Millbank Roaders, but my mum would never ever let me go off the, the front. <laughs> I I could never go up the top of the street. I always I wasn't allowed, I wasn't allowed to go halfway because just she didn't want me um getting into trouble or anything like that. But I was always sporty. Always right. loved football, netball, and playing out things like that. Um, there's no. No one in my family's ever boxed. No history yeah. of uh, boxing. How did you become? How did you think like, I would have boxed today? Well, I didn't. To be honest, looking back, I used to bully my brother. I used to always be fun <laughs> fighting with my brother, winding him up, um, that type of thing. And um, one of my neighbours, actually, a couple of doors down, he used to box. Right. So I always remember him going to the Headland Gym. He used to go on his bike and... I'll go and call. I used to go and call for him, and his mum would be like, "Oh, he's gone to boxing." So that's how the interest come about. I remember thinking, "Ah, oh, I want to go and try this boxing." Yeah. So literally, it was just you know going because a friend used to go. It wasn't never had no interest. I never watched boxing, never seen a boxing fight or anything like that. So when you first went to the gym, were you nervous going in there? Being a girl, obviously. Yeah. Well, because there was no other girls there, I got a couple of my girlfriends to go with me. Right. So I think there was about three or four of us went, um, and the coach Tim Coulter, he was very strict. I always remember him like half shouting at me and being like, "Well, if you've just come to mess about, you can just leave now." And yeah. I remember thinking, "Oh, they're strict in here." So anyway, I'd went in with me, my four friends, and we did one session, and they never ever went back. Right. But I, I loved that session. I loved it. Did you put the notes on, or did you just do the set ups and press ups and stuff? It that's was all, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. all the conditioning. So yeah. I'm very competitive, really competitive. But I love the whole who can do the most press ups in a minute. Yeah. Who can, I yeah. love that, that what, side of it. Yeah. 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 I'm, still, I'm the same. Yeah. But when you go in, you just, all you do is the skipping. I think they give you that little test, I think. Yeah. So, they do. Most people just pack it off the first session, you know, it's too hard. Yeah. As you know, it's the hardest sport in the world boxing. There's no other sport harder than that. So when did you first um when did you put the first put the gloves on? When did you when you when was your first sparring session? Can you remember that? So I wasn't allowed to spar for months. Right. Um and I think it was because I was a girl. 
And Tim now even admits that he didn't want me there. <laughs> he, just, he didn't want me. He didn't want me there. Um, he seen me as a bit of a hindrance. And right. he, I think he kind of hoped, you know, she'll lose interest in a couple of months or she'll get punched in the nose and she won't want to come back. But I remember my first spa, I just absolutely loved it. I just, you know, I think I got yeah. hit and I'd just come back. Right. So yeah. it was kind of, you're going to hurt me, I'm going to hurt you harder type thing. Because you've already done the spa with your brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's where it all stemmed from. <laughs> so your brother became a punch bag <laughs> to get you yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Well, he always <laughs> says, people always say, well, boy, why didn't you ever box? And he always says, well, when your sister used to beat you up, you're not going to be much of a boxer, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, so you stuck up for it as a board as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when did you? When was your first fight then? As obviously as an amateur. So, um, now just two first... seconds just before we go. What did your family think about your boxing? Your your mum and dad about everything. Well, to be honest, I was always involved in every, every... I used to do loads of sports, so I think my mum just thought it was a phase. Right. And I must have started about the October time, because I remember asking for a pair of gloves off my mum. And she was saying, oh, we'll just see, you might get a pair for Christmas. But she must have just thought, oh, she'll lose interest in a week, so I'm not going to buy you an old gloves. Yeah. Anyway, I'd lasted till Christmas, and she bought me a baby blue pair. <laughs> Bright baby blue pair, Um. But my dad, my dad used to work away a lot when I was younger. He used to, he was a roofer and he used to always go yeah. to London. And uh, when when I was young, I could never ever really remember my dad being there. So it was right. only when I started getting older, 16, 17, boxing for England, that's when my dad really, um, really got interested in it. Right. But, um, yeah, well, they, were, they were bothered. Nothing, nothing ever got said. They were just happy I was involved in something. Right, what was it like then, um, your first fight? Because when I, I used to fight a bare knuckle, obviously it's a different sport, but you're still nervous in it, no matter where you go. I used to say, every fight I had, I had fear and I had them nerves and butterflies when you were going mm -hmm. for the fight. And people, oh, but Custom Artist, as Mike Tyson says, the, the coward and the hero still have the same fear, but it's what the coward does makes him a coward and the hero does makes him a hero. I always, I always say that you have them nerves and butterflies. So how, yeah. how did you get over that? Because you were a little bit, a little bit shy, weren't you? Um, well, I had my first fight at 12 and I, I was a big girl. I was, I think, to be honest, I don't think I've grown since I was about 14 and I'm, I'm just under six foot now. So I think my first fight at 12, I was 60 kilo at 12 right. Right. and there wasn't a lot, there wasn't a lot of girls about then anyway. So I was really hard to find a fight. So my first fight was at 12 and it was in the Borough Hall on the Headland. Yeah. And yep. I wasn't scared for the fight i was more yeah. scared and nervous about yeah. everyone watching me because i was so shy and quiet the fact that everyone was coming to see you yeah. that's what the nerves were for for me not the fighting yeah. the fact that every there's going to be a room full of people watching you i remember when i was boxing you you, you you seem to be peeing every five minutes going to the toilet for the nerves yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah i was well, I used to get I used to get a um yeah. a, a nervous rash me. Right. That used to go right up my neck, all over my arms, my hands. Yeah. Yeah. So when you the first fight, did you win? Yeah, I won. I um I won that. And then we had a return on the girls show in Birmingham. So that was when right. I was twelve. And then I never boxed I never fought for two years because there was literally no one for me to fight. Right. So and then this is the this is the times in my career where I think I've really progressed because I love training so much. Right. I went to the gym. We used to train four times a week at the Headland and I never missed a session for two years because I loved the training. But I never boxed. But right. that wasn't an issue for me. Whereas you get some fighters where if they're not fighting or if they haven't got a fight coming up, they won't be in the gym. Yeah. I think you're better to train all the, all the time. I, I think yeah. that, now and then of a month or so, but I think you're better to train. And Mike Tyson was fighting every six weeks, so it does prove that you can do it, doesn't it? Um, fight your fit, as they call it. But uh, So how, how many amateur fights did you have then? So in total, I had 118 I had. So right. um, as domestic level, because I, I had a lot of internationals boxing for England, so that's when it goes up. Because you'll go up a tournament, you'll box four or five times in 10 days. Right. So domestically, I only had about 26 fights, which isn't a lot. Um, 
And I think I'd won my first 24. Right. So, oh no, sorry, I'm lying. I had, I think I had 24 domestic fights. I never ever got beat domestically. Right. Um, and then I think I won maybe something like me, me eighth inter- international, something like that. Right. Mm. What was the hardest fight you had as an amateur? Looking back now, I could honestly say that I had 118 and I got beat 15 times in the 118 and six right. of them were to the, the same girl. She, it was a Dutch girl right? and it was kind of my kryptonite air style. She was taller than me, very rangy. And I, I just felt, I thought with them six, I think I'd won one and she'd won five. Yeah. And um, I just felt like I could never get away with her style. Her style was just dead awkward for me. But looking back now, I can't say there's, there's any fight that stands out in me where I've walked away and thought there was nothing I could have done there. Yeah. I always felt like it was me that lost the fight rather than I was beaten by the better boxer. Right. What was the transition um, there when you when you went from amateur to pro? What was the difference? Obviously, um. Yeah, so, like, be, yeah. yeah, being international, I was very bouncy on my feet. I had my hands up around my temples, I, forwards yeah. and backwards in straight lines, no real power punches because everything was dead fast and throw as many shots as you can in the, in the two minutes. Yeah. So when I went got with Peter, it was just a total is, overhaul. Is Peter Fury, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Peter yeah. Fury. So he was he, – I went with Peter when I first turned pro yeah. and he just – he changed everything about me. I remember being on the pads with him and I remember him saying, put your hands down. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. I'll get punched in the face. He was like, no, I'll put your hands down. And he literally had me in the mirror oh, for months. I'd, I dare say about six months doing the same two-step footwork, having my hands around my waist. And there was times I remember looking in the mirror and thinking, God, you are crap. You are going to get punched all over. And then in the end, I was thinking... He's the only one who's offered to help you. Just listen, just do what he says. And I kind of just went into this subconscious mode of just yeah. just do it, just do it. So how did that come about, Peter? Did he see your box somewhere as an amateur or did he, did he come to you? No, no, no. So literally what it was, um, I'd done Rio 2016 and it was my second Olympic Games and um, I'd come fourth again. So I've got two fourth place certificates in the Olympics. Right. Right. I'd just missed out on a medal and it, it, it left a bit of taste in my mouth. I'd totally fell out of love with the sport. I didn't want to do it anymore. It'd become more of a job right. to me. So I was going to walk away. I was going to retire after 2016. Um, then anyway, a, a, someone had contacted me and said, oh, Savannah, Mayweather Promotions want to sign you in America. And I remember thinking oh, it was all right. oh, you get your own own apartment your own car move to vegas and i remember thinking wow someone upstairs doesn't want me to quit um so that was that before that savannah you were going to quit i was going to retire yeah did he he see your box where did he see your box where did he get to i I would like to box for me well he was in he was in rio for the olympics i think he'd seen me then right um so i think that's how that had come about and obviously I was going to retire, but I've decided to turn pro. And the guy who actually set the whole deal up for me is a guy called Sam Jones. Right. Now, he's made a big impact on pro boxing at the minute. He's Joe Joyce's uh, manager. He's, he's a promoter now. He's doing really well. And I was actually his first boxer. Right. And I remember messaging him uh, something like six, seven weeks before I was meant to go to Vegas for my debut and saying, oh, look, Sam, I've never ever bo- I've never ever trained with a pro coach. I don't know anything about pro boxing. You know, I've, I've, I'm still training with Tim, my amateur coach. And he messaged me, said, "Oh well, look, Joe Joyce is sparring Huey Fury in Bolton. His dad Peter said that you're more than welcome to come along, and he'll take you on the pads and show you some little pointers." So that was actually how all that come about, just right. by chance. What was me about like? Because for me, I used to love my hand. He's the best, but. I think Mayweather, what he's done, the 52 fights, never been beat. He's just unbelievable. He's so elusive. And they always say the good looking mm-hmm. boxers are the best because they don't get hit. Like, mm-hmm. like, yeah. yeah. That'd be like Sugar Ray Lennon and that. So, um, what was it like meeting him? He must be an awesome man, isn't he? To be honest, I only ever met him twice. Right. And within that, twice, two, that two times I'd met him, 
I was barely in his company for about the first time was when it got announced and he was too busy arguing with someone. He didn't really acknowledge me. And the second time it was at a Mayweather McGregor press conference right. and it was a really surreal moment. I was in his dressing gown and uh, dressing gown. <laughs> I was in his dressing room right. um, before he was about to have this press conference and it was filled with about 20 women and I was just sat there. And he was sat in the middle of the room getting his head shaved and you could have heard a pin drop. It was weird. It was really weird. And still then he didn't acknowledge me. And yeah. um, whenever I was in America, I don't even think he knew my name. He used to just call me the English girl. So <laughs> I don't know if that's him playing hard to get. Wait last year. Wait last year, I'm telling you. I yeah, so yeah. What was the first pro fight then? What, what was that like then? Like, obviously, we're doing a lot more rounds in pro. Can you explain to the people who don't know much about boxing? Yeah, so I made my debut on the Mayweather McGregor undercard in Las Vegas. That's what was um, that? How did it be there? It must have been unbelievable. So for the win, there was 10,000 people at the win. And I remember thinking, wow, I'm stood here in my brow. And it goes, <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, I remember thinking, got it. It's not going to get no better than this. I'm never, I feel like I started at the top and it, like it just went that well downhill yeah. but so being my debut i was on fest so i was on about five o'clock in the afternoon and um, this is what people don't realize so there was about 100 people in the arena in this twenty six thousand seat arena my mum and dad were three of them there was a couple of girls who i knew from houghtonly spring there um i walked out they didn't even play any any ring walk music uh, a box I'd done four or three minutes and I absolutely loved every second of it. Right. And then when I'd come out, previous to this, I got given three tickets uh, right. off my manager. So yeah. for me, straight away, mum, dad, sister, there you go, there's a ticket, come watch me box. But bearing in mind, there was about 15 of my family and friends come over and right. they couldn't get in. So yeah. they had to watch you know, in a hotel or something. Yeah. Um, so then I've boxed, I've gone in the change rooms, had a shower, got changed. The next thing, some bouncers turn up, oh, have you got your tickets? So I was like, oh, I've just boxed. No, 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 you need tickets. <laughs> so I'm ringing my manager saying, oh, look, I'm getting chucked out here. And they were like, oh, well, I'll give you three tickets. I went, oh, for me, for me mum, dad and my sister. He was like, no, they were for you when you're two coaches. So literally half an hour after I boxed, I got kicked out the arena. So I didn't even see where was the McGregor. unbelievable <laughs> And you so, couldn't you could write that script on us, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So, so what was it like remember, when I, you had the fight of Annie? People say to yeah. me, well, boxing and boxing, I mean, you don't you're all waiting and waiting and waiting. And once you get in there, the bell goes and it's over. The fight, it's gone and within you in sec you think it's gone in seconds, but you've had four, five, six rounds wherever you boxed. Yeah. You just want to keep going on, don't you? But before you get there, you're like all nervous about but the bell goes different place and it's your ground and you yeah it is it's different people but you don't hear the crowd they're often do you? you just you can hear no. them but you, don't, you don't you don't listen to them do you just no, you zone out you just zone yeah, out. sometimes it's a lonely place in that ring isn't it but obviously where you fight it's not but i can't believe you got kicked down you know what yeah. <laughs> so me, 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 i remember i was on the phone with my mum and my sister yeah. They're not interested in boxing my dad loved it but they weren't interested and they were like right well we'll come out and we'll give you the ticket and anyway, the, the security said, no, you're not allowed to do that. And I was saying to them, no, sit. they were like, we're going to walk out. We want to be with you. I was like, no, you sit there and watch that fight. It's the fight of the century. So they sat there all night, absolutely hating it. Yeah. So what, what was, um what, what, what was the, when you won the belt, what was it like winning the belt for the first time to fight for the world title? How hard was that fight when you won the belt? Was winning um, the belt first time harder? And actually hold it because some people say win the tag but to keep it's even harder would, would you say that's right well for me what so i was on the gb squad for for eight years i done so basically you're lottery funded so you're funded by the lottery so you get a wage it's tax free right. and you get all your petrol for paid for your accommodation your food you get looked after you're with booper five star everything then when you turn pro you basically, it's like you're self-employed. You have to pay for everything yourself, medicals, all sorts, sparring. Right. So it was a bit of a shock to the system for me. And also, I didn't realise how much pro boxing is a business. Yeah. 
it is a business and even now i love boxing but i despise the business side i think it's disgusting and i had my world title fight with hannah rankin in 2020 of the august yeah. and for me to get that world title fight Literally, when I turned pro, Brian, I, I remember thinking, right, I'm going to box for the British. I want to box for that Commonwealth. Uh, I'm not too fussed on the European because I don't like the belt, but then I'll box for it. And it is not like that at all. Right. You have to battle and get yourself in a position to fight. And then nine times out of ten people don't want to fight yeah, because you haven't got a belt yourself, so you're a lot of risk, low reward. Yeah. So just getting to that position to box for a title, it, it was an uphill battle for me for years. Right. So you, how long did you, before you fought for the title then, when you turned pro, how long was it? And what were, so, you, were you ranked high up then when you were, were you wanting to go for the belt? What, um, so, yeah, uh, well, no, not not even that. So in the, in the men's, you have right. like, um, yeah, you have rankings and you get yourself in positions yeah. where you're mandatory. But in the women's, because the pool of women is so shallow, right. you could be mandatory. Like one of my best friends was mandatory for uh, Katie Taylor's WBC belt for four yeah. years and she never got air shot. Yes, so is. it's just, it, it, it's not worth anything in the women's. You could get yourself to number one unless you've got a promoter behind you, backing you with money, then really you don't really stand a chance. So how did you get that shot for the, the um, title then? So I got that shot. Um, basically through Peter, through Peter pushing me and pushing me and you know telling me, look, you'll get there, just keep training and it'll happen for you. And eventually it did happen. Um, I was with Hennessy Sports Channel 5. I left him and went with Eddie Hearn on Sky. Right. And I'd, I was at the point where I was ready, ready for a title, but not a lot of people would fight me, like I said, because I didn't have a title myself. I was a big puncher. So why would you want to fight someone who could potentially knock you out? Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, um, my on my for my world title, my opponent actually got paid a lot more money than me, even though it was my show, it was my promoter, and yeah. um, they were meant to be in my corner. My opponent got more money than me. But you've done that, obviously. You you to get that you're, chance, you're, yeah. You're nothing if you could get yeah. the belt. That means exactly. So, what yeah. was the racing like when you won that belt? How, what was it like when you won it? Did it take a long time to sink in, or were you just like, I've done it, I've done it? No, for me, it was just like right there. I've, I've finally, finally, people have been people have been able to see how good I am. People, yeah. I'm finally getting the recognition I, I, I deserve and I've worked so hard for. Um, I knew I was world class, right? I've always known how good I am. But the hardest part for me was for people to see it. Yeah. And then, like I said, I, I got on the platform of Sky and I got given a world title shot. And what, that's, that's what, what made it. Eddie Hearn's like, what was he like? Was a, a... Um, I, I think Eddie, Eddie's very good at what he does. But yeah. for me, Eddie's got a lot of fighters, a yeah. lot of fighters. And I think he spread himself a little bit too thin. Um, mm. I think he's got... He's definitely got his favourites, yeah. and I think if you're not one of them favourites, then you're yeah. not gonna, you know, you're gonna have to. Like you said, you put the, hit the nail on the head. It's not just a sport; it's a business. It's, it's a like business, sport. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. exactly it's a business now. Years ago, it was totally different. People would fight for the country, be up the mountain to win in, but now it's, yeah. it's it's a money business, isn't it? It so, is. It is. It is. What What happened after you won the belt? What was the next stage? Were you thinking? After I've got this belt now. Like obviously, who's the next person you fought for the belt? Um, so obviously, um, at the higher weight, Clarissa, Clarissa's won, won three times world yeah. champions. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not. What favorite person there is she? <laughs> so obviously, it, it, it's a business, and yeah. Clarissa's the biggest fight I'm ever going to get at these higher weights because there's nobody, there's nobody there really, especially yeah. not with the profile and what Clarissa's done. Yeah. So I always knew that built properly, a fight with Clarissa could be massive. So I had a, a I've had two defences now. Um, I'm boxing again on the the second of April, right. um, back in Newcastle, and then get through that, and then, um, it's basically a done deal with me and Clarissa in the summer. So when are you boxing? What date? 
So I was meant to be boxing on the 12th of March, but it's just been pushed back to the 2nd of April now. In, oh, nice. Still in Newcastle, yeah. We'll try and get there, mate. Emma will come and see oh, you. Oh, nice one, yeah. Nice, nice one. You won't get through out when I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, what, so you, you, the Clarissa one, you're the only one to beat her, aren't you? Uh, yeah, so I boxed Clarissa in 2012 um, in, a, in an amateur tournament. Right. And then it just so happens that we never, ever crossed paths again. She went on to win everything. And I always seemed to get beat, you know, a couple of fights or the round before Clarissa. So that fight never, ever happened again. Right. So is that going to happen, that fight with her, then, do you think? Yeah, like I said, I, I'm boxing on the 2nd of April. I've got a tough right. test and get through that. And then, you know, it's basically a done deal with me and her. Right. Do you, do you have, what, what confidence have you got to win the fight? I'm I'm very confident. Um, I'm under no illusion of, no. of you know, how good how good of a fight she is, but yeah. I do generally believe that I've got what it takes to beat Clarissa. And I, I honestly believe I'm a better fighter. Yeah. So what what type of training do you do then for these type of fights? So just for people who don't know, like uh, so, late in the telly when you see them run at four o'clock in the morning and things like that. <laughs> um. So I, I train twice a day, Monday. To Friday, and then I train once on a Saturday. Right. Um, and I basically I spar three times a week. Right. Um, I do pads twice a week. Right. And I do I do a lot of strength work, me, a yeah. lot of weights. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a runner. I've never ever been a runner. I just think I'm. Um, I'm I hate it. I think it's the most boringest thing going. What I used to do, I used to do. I, I read about horses for running. On the flats, they were hurt the legs all the time. So they started running up banks. So if you, I used to sprint up a bank 50 meters and walk back down, sprint up a bank and do that. And that was better. 10 sprints were better for me than doing 10 mile runs. Well, and, just uh, you've yeah. just said that. That's what we do. So yeah, every. So, I was so doing Peter, that 30, 30 years ago. <laughs> so Peter has me sprinting up. I do, that's what I do hill sprints. So I yeah, do hill yeah. sprints every week. And if I was to run, it'd be for weight loss. So it'd be nice to slow, mm. steady plod. But, um, yeah, the, the hill sprints. As well is when you run up the hill, you're, you're actually on your, your shock absorbers like your calves. When yeah. you're on the yeah. flat, you're two and a half to three times heavier when you're on the concrete. But when you run up the hill, because you're on your you're on your calves, on your toes, the shock, the shock takes away all the, the stress on your back and lower, lower yeah. legs. So it's really good for sprints and high intensity interval training. But years ago, Frank Brown used to train and Tyson went, oh, I don't lift weights because they make you slow. But they don't, they do the complete yeah. opposite. High, high, heavy weights it's a beat up your fast twitch fibers and, and yeah. light and the opposite way. So, my, my coach, when I was boxing at the amateur, like the Lingdale, he said, Oh, you don't lift them weights, you get stiff, you get too stiff. But all top sprinters, I mean, my friend Richard Kilty, the Olympic champion, he uses 400 pound squats to, to run that makes you faster. But people were lost in them in the old days, thinking, Oh, heavy weights are no good, but all the top yeah, yeah. weights are done there. They do, but I'll, uh, I'll be telling Peter about that, that horse one. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. 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 Injuries running on the flat, but when they run up the banks, it, it saved them because obviously they've run up the banks, so that's cushions of blow, you know, on the legs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I was keep uh, that one. years ago before. I think anyone thought of it. <laughs> some of my <laughs> things I was doing, they're only coming out now, some of the stuff. So, yeah. So what, what, what is the money like when you win the belts and things like that? Is it good money for the girls or is it not good? Um, not really. Uh, yeah. So, put it this way: if I was a man winning a world title, yeah, I'd be a couple of hundred grand. Right. Um, as a woman, it you know it's it's not a patch on that. It's not a, a fraction on that. Yeah. Um, and the money you spend, obviously, for yeah, that that's you're, one you're thing honest. people don't understand with boxing. Mm -hmm. You're a couple of grand down before you've even boxed. You've got to pay for sparring. Yeah. You know, you want the right food, all your nutrition, your protein. Then you've got to pay for strength and conditioning coaches. And so you're looking yeah. at about 10, 15 grand for a full yeah. camp. And you've got something to help you with diet. And then you've got yeah, something yeah. to massage just for you and all types of things. Because you need all these things when you're boxing to, to be at the, the elite at the top. Because all the other ones are getting it. You have to do the same, don't you? Because you get left yeah. behind. Yeah. yeah, so... So what, what's what's your what's your favourite combination then? Oh, I don't. 
Oh, so basically, so um, the way Peter taught me, well, the first style he ever taught me was everything long, everything loose, because I'm quite tall, I've got long arms. So now, with the past couple of months, we've been working on inside stuff, because so I've got dead long arms, so anyone smaller than me is going to beat me to the punch on the inside, because my arms are longer. Yeah. So we've been working on um, a lot of inside stuff, and a couple of months ago, do you know, my me, me body shots, because my arms are so long and loopy, it, mm. do you know, it, it took me just to twice as long as someone shorter than me. They would have beat me at the punch. But now we've really been working on it, short uppercuts on the inside. And I, I feel my confidence inside is, is so much better. So, like, I am love it. If I had to pick a combination, I'd be um, right uppercut, left hook. I like that one. I used to like on the inside. The body, left to the body again, left to the end, right uppercut. The same as the yeah. Tyson, Tyson, Mike Tyson one when he come in with the right hand. I was really good at that, that combination. But I used to box and I'd be throwing these big punches and, and hit the pads. And the lad said, listen, forget about being tight-handed and heavy because you get these bodybuilders going, oh, you're mm. just punch that. you've got to punch like your hands and nothing in your hands dead like and then boom. Yeah. You punch, you don't punch through. But you think, oh, you punch through, but you don't. You stop going, you're about half an inch. I've just passed the chin. So all that, gener- that power generates. And then I also have a theory, people with big legs, Mike Tyson's, yeah, um, Foreman, Mam Dali's, um, Briggs Nazim, all big legs, all got big punches. And I think that come generates the power comes from your thighs. You know, yeah. Yeah. you know, they pivot on, on the, the thing. But a lot of people who think uh, punch heavy, you don't punch heavy. You punch. I was talking about like the boxer who fought AJ. The other yeah, way, yeah, 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 yeah. like that, and he was saying the same. You're right, Brian. He said you punch as if your hands are loose. You get people going as if the bench is five hundred pounds trying to punch. Yeah. But it's the snap, isn't it? The movement. I, I always say. I don't know if you can dance. Most people can dance. I used to be a good dancer when I was a kid. If you can dance, you can be a good boxer because it's just the same type of thing. But every fight I used to have myself in, in the in the bare knuckle fight in the streets, or you'd like yourself, it's a game of chess in it because every fight is not the same. It's not you've got to change tactics. Um, what what do you do when you you look at do you look at the footage of someone trained? Then you think I want to. Well, she's got longer arms than me, or she's got that. You have to work it out, don't you? Like a, a general, really, like, mm-hmm. like in the army. So I'm I'm quite like um, I'm a thinker, mate. Yeah. So say, so say you've got six to eight weeks for a fight. I'll I'll watch my opponent, and over them six to eight weeks, I, I constantly thinking, right? If she does this, I'll do this. If she comes at me like this, like so, my last fight in October, I boxed her an African, and she was quite heavy-handed. This African. Um, quite aggressive. She had quite a few stoppages. And the night before, I remember laying there thinking, is she going to try and outbox me? And I thought, no, she can't. There's, she can't outbox me, so she's going to stick it on me. Yeah. She's going to come and she's going to try and knock knock me out. And she yeah. did. She 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 really stuck it on me the first round. And I think she thought, right, well, she's a slow starter, so if I can catch her cold, yeah. that's it. Um, yeah. But I'd prep for that. I'd prep for it coming at me like a steam train yeah so i always when i go into a fight i'm not confident and known that anything they do or bring i've got an answer for yeah yeah so you study the fight watch what they do and think right she's going to come that way she's going to hit me with the left mm-hmm. there or come to that side so yeah i know what you mean it's just like a game of chess isn't it it's different yeah. to, it's mm-hmm. A, mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever got any of the fights wrong when you're Done for someone. Thought I'm going to do this and do that, and it's gone wrong. Um, no, not really. And I think this is where Peter comes into it because Peter, Peter's got this eye. So, for instance, Peter sees things that I'd I'd never see. So, so for instance, I'll be watching his son who we spar, and Peter will be saying, "You're doing this wrong, and you're doing that wrong," and I'll be watching, thinking, "Well, I think he's sparring all right," but obviously he's looking. He says to me, he's watching me span. He's not even watching the hands. He's watching the footwork. Yeah, that's right. And then he'll be watching me head move. So he's the way, the trainer that he is, the brilliant trainer that he is, I think that I'm that confident that because I've got him in my corner and I know there's, you know, like I said, there's an answer for everything with with him. Yeah. Well, that's like, that's what you got a good coach. It's like Custom Arnold with Tyson, just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, they say in golf when you, you you're playing golf and where your feet are when you hit the the, 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 the sweet shot when you hit the golf ball. Yeah. 
you're fighting the same as in boxing. There. That's what he's trying to say to you. So, have you ever um, have you ever been in a fight where you thought, um, where you took a little bit of concentration off, or you're always concentrating all the time? Have you ever have you ever been a bit where you think complacent? That's going to be easy this one, and you've struggled a bit. Not as a pro. Yeah. No, never, never as a yeah. pro. Um, even me world title fight with Hannah Rankin, we'd sparred previously, me and Hannah, and I knew I could beat her. I knew yeah. I could beat her, but I knew she was tough. And I knew that whatever I th- whatever I threw, she'd st- she'd st- Peter had said to me, look, if you go out there and try and knock her out, like you've just been saying, hands dead yeah. tense. He went, she'd be there all night because yeah. she'll get used to the power. Yeah. And he said, what you've got to do is you've got to, you know, start off slow and then she'll get in it with false sense of security and thinking, ah, she's not a puncher. And then that's when you'll get her because her hands will start dropping. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's what I'm saying. It's it's the the, the, the mental side as well. It's yeah. not just a case of going in there and thinking, right, I'm going to knock you out because nine times out of ten, it'll never happen. Yeah. So when you're doing that, when, you, when people go to Sunday spot, when you're fighting someone, you throw bombs at them and you throw it, you take yourself yeah. out. But if you hit them, yeah, not so bad. But if you miss, it's like if you miss, exactly, it's like three punches, isn't it? So every time you miss, the energy starts going. Have you struggled on that ever? Ever your energy because your engine seems really strong, like you just keep going like an ever any battery. Well, this is another thing. This is what Peter says. So he says it's more demoralizing and tiring when someone's missing. So mm. the style he's taught me, it's very you ride shots. Mm. And it's a safe way as well because you're never yeah. taking a you're never taking a blow full on. Yeah. So really, you, you, it's it's a safe way, and you're protecting yourself because at the end of the day, it's a dangerous sport. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. And riding the shot as well. There, there. When you throw the punch at something, you hit them there like that. It stops. But when you're riding the punch, is going. They're, they're having to throw the hand further away from you. Yeah, yeah. Towards your body, and when you move them back like that, they're using mm. more energy, so then you're tiring them out. And then you go to the body, don't you? Drop the hands, type of thing. So, yeah. what body shots like? I've, I'm good. I've got, I've got, I've got a good body shot on me. Um, yeah. But like I said, the, the style all comes from. Do you know? There's mm. Even some aunt, I watch myself on telly, and I think, God, that. Uh, do you know? If I was fighting me, I'd think, look, she looks yeah. slow and she doesn't punch. But it's quite deceiving. It's that style of being loose and re- relaxed, and you can go ten rounds, like you said, if you're ten stop. Yeah. trying to knock someone out, you last three or four rounds. Because your adrenaline kicks in then. Once yeah. your adrenaline kicks in, you spent. I've seen loads of fighters, loads of top, I won't mention their name, really good fighters, and they can't control that adrenaline. How do you control your adrenaline? Because once that adrenaline's gone, you might get two or three minutes and spent, and your body's, your body's uh, mm. you've got no oxygen because you use that much oxygen with the yeah. Yeah. So how do you keep that out? out? In the amateur, did you struggle at it until you um, Definitely. I, I really struggled with my mind as an amateur. Um, yeah. And it was more, like I said, my first fight, I was more nervous for people watching. And as I went to tournaments, I started winning world championships, Europeans, and yeah. getting to the Olympic Games and being the number one favourite. I literally couldn't handle the fact that there was hundreds of thousands of people thinking I was going to win. I couldn't handle it. Right. And it was just an awful feeling for me. It was just a very, like I said, I couldn't handle it at all. And then when I turned pro, I can honestly say, Brian, since I've been pro, I've never been nervous once. Right. Is, and that, is that probably because the likes of Peter and Peter, you know, they're, they're, they're I, there with you? I think so. But I also put it down to, I always think I was never meant to be here. I was never meant to turn pro. So for me, all this is just a bonus. This is the, so just enjoy it and just by thinking like that. Honestly, I get so excited. I'm sat in the change rooms thinking, "Oh, come on, I can't wait to get in there." Whereas <laughs> an amateur, I used to think, "Oh God, can't wait. This is over. Ten minutes and it's over." Yeah. And it's crazy. I would just just the little twinge of the thought, and your confidence just goes through the roof. Mm, you do, yeah. And you can beat yourself up. You can be in bed and you go. I remember I used to put. I'm going to beat him. Yeah, but he's a pro, but he's a pro boxer. Oh, yeah. And then the other boys will go, yeah, but you might get caught with the jab. And I'm just closing my eyes and I'm trying to sleep. And the one saying, yeah, you got to win. The other one's going, no, you can't win. It's like you've got mm. two punches in your head, isn't it? Did you, yeah. did you struggle with that? As a pro, honestly, no. Yeah. I've yeah. never, 
I never get no nervous rash. <laughs> I never get any. I never get anything. It's more. It's just pure excitement. Can't wait to show you all what I've what I've done, yeah. how I've trained. It's yeah. Do you think what you've conditioned your mind more? As that was probably is like you have to win this. I know I can win this. I'm the best pro. I used to say I can't be beat. I won't be beat, and I refuse to be beat. I used to keep saying that to myself every time. Yeah, yeah. Who have you beat him? Who have you beat him? Who have you beat him? I'll do all this stuff and so. I'd program it. Then I used to get pictures of the pest and put it on the wall. I'd be at the bag. I'd look at them and then I'd pick the wall. I'd be looking at the pest. You're going to get this. You're going to get this. You go. I'd be doing this on the back all the time. And you program your mind when you see the pest. You just, you know, you, you do. Just, yeah, you, you do. You yeah. Do have you ever done that with it? It. Uh, I don't go as far as putting that picture on the wall. Yeah, yeah. When, I'm boxing, when I'm shadow boxing, when I'm shadow boxing, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I, I do. I do. What I used to struggle with, I used to struggle shadow boxing. And an old, he fought in Madison Square Garden, a lad called Frank Yappert, and he was strawberry, really good doctor. And he taught me a lad called John Black, who was a lead up his coach as well. I couldn't, couldn't punch nothing. So they, what they've done, they had the washing line, and they put a piece of string on it. So yeah. I punch the string, not like go for the string, and the, the combinations. And that's how I learned the shadow box. For all those people out there doing shadow box, it's brilliant to do that, because you've got something to aim at, you see. Yeah. You ever mm -hmm. do they might try someone in under the rope. Do you do that one? Um, not not so much. But saying that, I was I've been doing a little bit of training. And Peter lives in the Cotswolds, so on a weekend yeah. I've been just to get another couple of sessions in. And the um, we we're in his garage. You know, you get the card for the garage door. Yeah, yeah. I was shadow boxing the other day, and I was like bobbing and waving with this little this little, little uh, card with a little um, yeah. bubble on the end. Yeah, so. I know exactly. It's like a little. Um, like a little rubber thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can box that, you know, it's just great. But mm. what, what's your favourite um, thing you do in the box? What's your favourite thing? Is it the sparring? Is it the training? Is it what, what do you like? Um, well, here's another one for you. So, my whole amateur career, I used to hate sparring because right. I was so competitive. Yeah. So I used to have a bad spar or take a, a single punch. I used to go back and I used to beat myself up all night. Yeah. And when I got with Peter, I remember him saying to me, look, I don't care if you get beat up. I just want to see you get this one jab off. I yeah. just want to see you get this hook we've been working on. Yeah. And like again, just like that, yeah. my whole mindset changed. Now I love spar. I'd, take spar I'd spar every day. Yeah, I love sparring because I understand what it's about. Sparring, it's not yeah. about going in there and knocking each other out. It's about yeah. learning. Yeah, I, I remember John Black used to teach me, and I used to always like, I like the big right, and we've got the big left one, the big right. You can't always throw your favorite punches. You have to be throwing punches from different angles. Like, There's no power in that, you see, yeah, because you've got to learn. You can't yeah. always learn the best shots. You've got to learn every punch in the business mm -hmm. to be a top boxer or a top fighter. Yeah. Then we don't punch as well. I think, oh, that's crap, man. I don't want to do that. And like Peter, we out. Like, they know yeah. they've been doing it a lot longer than us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to do that, learn different combinations, different things. So, Peter, what you went doing as an amateur? Well, yeah, like I said, I, I won the world title. And every, he, he, all he used to teach me was everything long. And then I remember winning the world title. And he was like, right, I'm going to teach you how to work on the inside now, be dead short on the front foot. And I remember thinking, I'm a world champion. What else have I got to learn? Yeah, but you, never, it was like, you never stop learning. You never stop. You never no. stop. Because if you think you know everything, there's always somebody else will come along mm -hmm. and a little bit more than you. So, mm -hmm. do you um, have different sparring parties? Do you have to travel to different sparring parties? Do they travel to you? Um, no. So, I, sparring ten, generally uh, come, comes to me. Um, right. I've got quite a couple of good sparring partners that, like, are they local? Last, are they local? Um, Manchester. So, I'm based in Cheshire now. Right. So it's all like the Manchester area. Um, mm -hmm. But being a pro, the best sparring is the amateurs. Right. Because of the speed, because of the footwork. You know yourself with the pro, everything gets slowed down. Your feet get slowed down because you do the longer rounds. Right. So getting three or four amateurs in to do two rounds in, two rounds out, it really sharpens you up. Yeah, I was going to say, your hands are a bit faster because it's obviously yeah. After you have, you've only got two minute, three two minute rounds on you, so you've got to do yeah. all that in that shot mm -hmm. time. Um, what was going to say? So when you were when you train for the, um, the, the the fights, what do you think is the hardest part in all of it? Is it just is it getting the fight off someone? Does that frustrate you having to get an opponent? I can imagine like 
and be had where you've got to fight someone who's you get you're all trained up for it and all of a sudden go off oh, she can't come she's bad or have you had that before oh brian it's the story of my whole pro career there was a girl <laughs> last year that um it's actually the girl who i'm fighting in april i was meant to fight her april last year done the whole camp fight week come she was about to get on the plane and she tested positive for covid so the, it's so i'm the, i'm actually fighting her now nearly a year to the day right. um but look I, I, then i think that's where my amateur experience comes in all right. them tournaments i used to do where you used to turn up on the day probably the same with like school boys and things yeah. like that you'd turn up on the day and you wouldn't find out who you were boxing till an hour before yeah. Yeah. so that you know that's just all part and parcel of it for me yeah, I've been a few where the, the lads have trained for six weeks for a fight they've got there, and then the other doesn't turn up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're devastated going all the way to London or something for a fight. Yeah, Maybe for six, seven, eight weeks, and they don't turn up. That must be devastating. Has that happened to you as well? Um, not so much as a pro. I've mm. had it where they haven't got me a pawn until the day before, and you start right. thinking, "Am I going to box? Am I going to box?" And do you know, they it, they do always deliver, but. It's yeah. about just keeping your, your head right and your, your mind focused. So what, what what is the future for you then? Obviously the Carissa fight. Um, yeah, how, yeah. Good is she, how good is she? What what is her strengths? What you've got to watch out for? Um look, she's very experienced. There's um she's boxed a lot better opposition than me. Yeah. Uh I agree to that. But she's never boxed anybody like me. Yeah. Um I think she's fast. I think she's very fast. I think she's got uh, things that she's not so good at. Um, you think you're a heavier puncher than her? I think I'm a lot bigger than her. Hell, yeah. I'm naturally yeah, a sure. lot bigger than her. I, I, I think that... And I think the way she boxes and the way I box are completely different. Yeah. I think that, you know, when you've got someone in your face throwing light shots, moving, slipping and yeah. sliding... And I think the way she is, a temperament, I think she's quite easily wound up. Yeah. Um, awesome. Once she starts missing, like I said, it's demoralising. Um, but it's going to be a massive fight, a massive hard fight for me. Like I said, I, I know what she's good at. I know what she's about. She's world class. Yeah. Um, but I do, I'm just that confident in my ability. I'm world class as well. You've got to remember that. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got the belt. Yeah. Prove it, yeah. Exactly. Prove it. Have you got the belt with you? It's in the gym. Oh, right. uh, it's in the gym. Yeah. We we'll get the belt off you. So, um, what I was going to say. So, so what? What are you doing now? Then at this moment, are you just ready for the fight in April? So, like I said, the bit you were saying about the things ever get cancelled. So obviously, I was meant to box on the twelfth of March. I did yeah. a. I did. I already did a seven week camp. So I basically train full time. Every. I don't have time off. I think I have two weeks off after every fight, and I'm straight mm -hmm. back in the gym. Yeah. Because yeah. for me, that's how you learn. That's how you improve. Yeah. Um, so I've already done a seven, eight week camp, and then it's been pushed back again till the second of April. So I kind of had last week took my foot off the gas, took me yeah. just ate what I wanted. So I'm yeah. basically back on it, back sparring this week. Um, so I'm I'm just just back to you know training training full on now, really, till the you fight. Know, you know, when you're saying you're stronger than her and you you're bigger. People will understand. I understand it is when she goes in the way in, she's some people go in the way in and they'll save the 12 stone. But there, is it two days? I think you've got when you're eating after it's a one day 24. Uh, I think it's 24 hours, yeah. Well, is it that 24 hours? You put five, six pounds on, can you? Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're mm -hmm. so you'll strip down, then you'll put five or six pounds on where she won't be able to do that. And yeah, that yeah, like yeah. So I, in, you know, 12 stone, for instance. When she comes, she might be twelve so until you're going to be twelve so night, maybe. Yeah. So yeah. I, I have to boil down to middleweight. Yeah. Um, you struggle to that getting down because of your size. Do you know what? Because I do it properly, mm. I don't, and right. that's what makes me think: could I make super welter? So right. I, I had all tests done, all body fat tests, and all stuff like mm. that, and it would basically be a damage to me health which is good yeah, oh, yeah, for me to do super well so i know i'm at the right weight with middle yeah because um, i've seen boxing yeah. do that and they've gone down too far and they've died in the ring because they've died yeah. bodybuilders have got the wrong stage and they've got that the, low, the body fat's that low it's a danger to the body isn't it? yeah it's the, it's the dehydration the hot bath yeah. yeah and then then you're damaging your health because that's how mm -hmm. knockouts mm -hmm. and things no they, water on the brain they, no, no, that's not enough water for your kidneys. Mm -hmm. 
you die mm-hmm. and you need them in the saunas and they're going in and yeah. exhausted by the time you've got that weight down because you could be too heavy. Some boxes have been too heavy and when you're too heavy, I'm surmising you don't go too heavy because you can get the weight off easier. Some people just let themselves go down the boxes and then you have to lose two or three stone, which is really hard to do, isn't it? But that really Well, it was wrecked. like it was like Ricky Hatton, so... Yeah. Kerry Kays, you I don't know if you know him through the bodybuilding. Yeah, Kerry Kays, yeah, he did so, all the so, yeah, 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 yeah. So Kerry yeah. just my Kerry's my strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, well he's he had yeah. a doctor before with Dory Yates and Dory Yates used to kept killing yeah. used to go around and talk about me benching six hundred pounds and that and he used to he used to talk about me in the gym with a lad called uh, Michael Flanagan. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm with Kerry tomorrow, so I'll mention it. Yeah. yeah. I'll mention it. So, but um so, Yeah, talk about your weight. So you if you have your weight What's the most you'll go up to? So we ah uh, so I'm I'm still in kilos, me. So I box at seventy two six, which is the middleweight limit. Yeah. And I normally walk. I do a lot of my sparring at seventy six, seventy seven kilo. Right. And um, which is what five about ten eleven pound something yeah. like that. Yeah. 11 so then fight week, I, I I tend to lose you know two two three kilo. Yeah. And then obviously I rehydrate and I go back up to like 76, 77. So it's a so good what, 10, 11 pound. So what weight will you be at when you fight her then, Carissa? And what will she be at, do you reckon? Uh, after I've weighed in, I don't know what she, I don't know what her routine mm-hmm. is or anything like that. But like yeah. I said, I like to go straight back up to like 76, 77. Right. Um, but I, I, I very rarely go above 78 kilo. Right. Um, but I train all the time, so I don't allow myself. Yeah. To to to, uh, to go yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean I've seen boxes and it sounds crazy. You can be four or five pound over and it slows mm. you down, doesn't it? I've seen them do it. Yeah. Hundred percent. It's like what, the straw that brought the camel back. I've been at twenty twenty stone ten. I was good at that way. When I went to twenty one, I was slow, I was out of breath. That extra yeah. four pound it was it was a nightmare. So I dropped back down to twenty twenty and a half. I fight you that way to, um, and I felt a lot better at that way to, even though it was only a few pounds, but it's like this, the straw that brought the camels back. You can be just yeah, chilling yeah. a little bit. Now, um, see, I, every camp I have, I get weighed every morning and I write right. my weight down every day. I write yeah. what I've done, how many rounds I've sparred. And I think this is one thing that especially boxers should should start doing because, like you said there, you realise, oh, I'm a little bit slow today in sparring. Well, why? Oh, well, you're a couple of pounds heavier. Yeah. And you can go back and say, well, look, I'm a, I'm a bit behind on my sparring. I have been getting my runs in. Yeah. So it's it's definitely worth and documenting can, things. You can lose the fight for just being complacent, can't you? Oh, I'll be all right. Like yeah, you to, yeah. Yeah, you've got to be at the pinnacle. If you train to the best you can, you get your diet right, you get your train right, you get your sleep, you get your routine, you get your mind right, everything's right and you get beat. You can't, you can't win, can you? But if you sit mm-hmm. back, oh, I shouldn't have had that Mars bar, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Then you can sit yeah. there and well, you can use that as an excuse, can you? Because you, you've mm-hmm. got to be in your game when you're fighting for a well tight, you've got to be at the pinnacle, haven't you? Mm-hmm. And eating properly. Do you struggle? What's your favourite favourite food? Um I like seafood, mate. Right. Uh, I'm a, uh, I'm like I'm not a dr- so I don't drink. i d I'm a foodie, so I prefer yeah. to go out for a meal. Um yeah. but I I like seafood, I like fish. Yeah. So I, I think I'm blessed in that way that I'm not um, yeah. pop and chocolate type thing. Right. Do you struggle with any food? What you, 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 you eat? What should be eating that? Um, not pizzas or like that or anything? No, not really. I like, yeah. do you know what? I like lamb. So if I was yeah. to have like some, I, I'd have an Indian. I like an yeah. Indian. I like a lambo. Yeah. yeah, I like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like a boner. So do you miss the family? Do you go and come back to Hartley and see the family? Yeah, and I normally come home like every other weekend, but I haven't been home this year actually because um, obviously, like I said, I was meant to fight in March and yeah. things like that. But actually, my mum and dad had come down this weekend, uh, weekend gone, and we'd watch the fight together. And so it's it's my friends come down a lot. Right. So it's, um, and, yeah, and, but you know, you've got Skype and that it's it's a lot easier to keep. See, it is. It really is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nothing like that. <laughs> so, so when when you um when you're going for the next fight, is that going to be in America? The, the big title fight? No, no. So the hope to get it at St James's Park. Oh yeah, that's just yeah. a good one, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. the reason for me, because I've made my debut in America, 
Right. I'm not too fussed about it. I've kind no. of ticked that box. And also, Peter's got a criminal record. Right. Um, so Peter can't get into America. <laughs> I get asked about all the time, and I'm like, oh, no, um, can't go to America. You know? yeah. But I'd never go without him anyway. So it's just not an option I'm for me. It's not to air or anything. I don't think you're going to get that. When the mayor with a fight, you will be under card. I don't to get that again. I don't. Think you'll get that again. Will no, you? I don't. I don't. Ten thousand people and just yeah. Label it. So you've been there in Vegas and everything. So you're going to be fighting in Newcastle next week. Do you do you still spar with lads? Are you allowed to spar with men? Yeah, yeah. I've I've yeah. always sparred with men. Always. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a good sparring partner in it, and a girl at the minute. She's um, she's called Sydney. Sin, sorry, Cindy Nagambia, and she's from. She's from the Ivory Coast. No, she's from Cameroon, but she's she's right. over here now. She's an amateur, a mm. strong girl, um, typical African, draw loads of heart, non-stop coming. Yeah. Um, so I, I tend to spar Cindy about once a week because it, it's – although that I spar a lot of men, yeah. they've got the physical advantages. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was – to be honest, all the years I've boxed Brian, I've never had no injuries or anything like in, in, like head injuries. Yeah. But last year I got concussion from sparring, and it wasn't a single shot or anything. I yeah. think it, I'd sparred on the Wednesday night, and then I'd sparred on the Thursday, and I don't think I'd had enough time to recover. And I took some heavy shots off some big lads. Yeah. And like I said, it was the first time ever I'd ever experienced anything like that, and it scared me. It really, really scared me, and it made me realise that look, I'm in a spot where potentially I'm getting hit off men that are ten times harder than stronger than women, and do you know it, it? It just takes that 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 one shot to totally change your life. It makes me laugh when people say, "Oh, I'd have fought Mike Tyson for their ten million. You know, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was training. I do five hundred press ups a day, five hundred sit ups a day. I was training three times a day, six days a week." Run up hills like you said, four o'clock them on. Yeah, yeah. You're on that spot. I mean, so when you're fighting something like that, the, the abs are like concrete. The, the, the punch is there thrown. When they when they say fifteen stone, there's fifteen stone coming through that hand. When you're just throwing yeah. a punch with your arm strength, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, in, in the sport, people don't realize how hard it is until <laughs> when they've been hit with something yeah. like that. Phenomenal speed, or something like Mike Tyson is just. You couldn't get a blistering speed like that. Was, mm -hmm. You just can't get away from it, can you? I mean, that was a great fight the other night with them. Um, Carl and Brook, yeah, yeah. Marvellous yeah. fight. And at the end, that's why I love what boxing. Put their arms on each other and said, God bless them and all that. Love yeah, them. yeah, yeah. Do you, you well, get that yourself in, in, in the boxing? You, when you've had a hard fight with someone, even if you get beat, you still have that camaraderie, don't you? Like, yeah, when... definitely, definitely. Or even a hard spa. I yeah. mean, people don't realise, they just see the fight on the telly, but they don't realise the 10 weeks of training, the 100 rounds of sparring, because yeah. that's that's the damage, the sparring. Do you know, I know in the fight you have little gloves, but if you imagine how many times a week you're getting punched in the head from free sparring sessions, it's a, it's a, do you know, it, it soon tallies up. You and every single punch you get, you get brain damage off at the same time. Yeah, head. yeah. Because your brain shakes about and your head, doesn't yeah, it? So yeah, You get brain damage in it. So, yeah, so um, so what what, what are you thinking of then? Of, you know, when you're at home, what do you think about it? Do you think about the fights? Or do you just, what are your favourite things do you do at home then? Um, yeah, so like I said previous, I, I'm constantly thinking, I'm constantly thinking, right, is she going to do this? I'll do that. So it's always subconsciously in my mind. Yeah. Um, but I've got two little dogs. Right. And I, I like I like going for walks. I, I, I do yeah. a lot of walk and just, and that's my little bit of headspace there. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're the dog to that, that takes away that thinking, doesn't it? Because you're with the dogs and you're playing there. Yeah. And you're a walk and you get the thingy. Yeah, so. it does. Anything else you want to talk about before we go? Uh, no, no. Do you, just, do you um, want to anyone? Good luck or Pete or anyone like that. It's just uh, and Pete Peter, is he still look, looking after you, Peter? So Peter, look after yeah, he is, he is, him. Yeah, he is, he is, he is. Have you yeah, yeah. met Tyson and all the others? Have you met them lot? So obviously they, they, they don't really they don't um Peter uh, Peter doesn't train Tyson anymore. Yeah, but yeah. when I first no. went yeah. to train with Peter, Tyson was there and it was the time when he, he put all that weight on. Yeah. And I remember him I remember watching him and he had like, it looked like he squeezed into his shorts and his top and he was massive and he was hitting the bags. And I, I just, 
to be honest, when I went with Peter, I didn't know yeah. anything about him. All I knew was he was Tyson's uncle. Yeah. And I remember being in the gym and Tyson was there in the bags. I remember looking and thinking, God, you're the heavyweight champion in the world. And you, you're like, you're fat. <laughs> you're massive. Um, but he didn't, he didn't and, do well, though. He ended it around. So that's what I'm saying. He, 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 unbelievable. He, he, he took drugs. He admitted he took steroids, all that stuff. He put his hands up and said, I'm sorry, everyone. And admitted mm. it. I thought it was brilliant because I do it myself with the mental health. I say, I was on drugs. I got stuck on the crack and I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My depression went through the roof and everyone come out. And since I've done it, we've helped that many people by doing it. And people like Tyson, and Mike Tyson's done it, Frank Bruno. The ball come yeah. on, what we suffered from it. It is another thing what I think is wrong. Boxers like yourself, you the world champion that and then when you're finished, you just get left. After exactly. You, you exactly. Experience where you pay, like they pay for you, where you, after you've become a boxer, because that's why they all go down the downhill because they're used to being in the ring, the sparring with the coaches, the sparring with the team. You've got mm -hmm. all, that, all that time with them, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you just like, well, you've got nothing to do. So yeah. You, Gambling, they end up taking drugs. Do you think that's wrong? I think it's wrong. Just to, uh, just to yeah, well, you get institutionalised. Like yeah. my friends say I'm institutionalised now because all I do is train, go home, get ready for the next session, go. And that's and even when I've got a Saturday, Sunday off, I'm constantly thinking about what I'm going to do on Monday. Yeah. And I do worry about when I retire, how yeah. am I going to fill that void? I think you better um, watch something maybe because you'd be a great coach, obviously maybe for the amateur team or something after Great Britain, I think you do really well because obviously you, you, you got the pinnacle at the top. How long have you got left then to go before you retire? Well, when would you say, this is it, I've had enough now? I've been boxing since the age of 11 and I'm 30 now, coming up 31. So I've boxed for a long time. Yeah. And like I said, Clarissa will be the biggest fight I'll ever have. I'll never get another fight like that because of the rivalry, because of the background, England versus America. So I think once that's done and dusted, yeah. and do you know, I'm happy with everything I've achieved, I, I, I can't see no reason why I wouldn't do you know, happily walk away. But like mm. I said, I love training. Mm. And if I still enjoy it and still love the sport and still want to get up on a morning and go to the gym, I'll carry on. Yeah. But some my old amateur coach, Tim, always said to me, one day you'll just wake up and think, I don't want to do this anymore. And he said, that's the time when you have to think well, about your, your, yeah. your future in the sport because when you're doing something you don't want to do, like Amir Khan said after the fight, yeah. I've lost the love for the sport. Yeah. I yeah, think, I think, yeah. You get there, and you know, and you, you know, you can't do it. Like me, I, somebody would say to me, "Who would be the worst fight you would have?" If somebody come to you and said, "Who would be the hardest fight you ever had?" I'd say Brian Cockle when he was twenty six. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bad, you <laughs> And it's true, isn't it? You, you couldn't, you can't do when you get in your fifties. You can't do what you could when you were in your twenties. It's impossible. Mm. Time and time doesn't wait for no man or no woman. So you have to come to the end of your career. And you just, I think when you retire, you should stay retired. You get these people. I won't mention the name. They've gone back and they've made fools. Yeah, for the money. Yeah, just for the money. Yeah. They've, made they've been never been beaten. World, world class champions, and they get beat off like mm -hmm. people who've never mm -hmm. been millionaires because they haven't got the speed. And they haven't got the. They haven't got. They don't train as hard. You can't train as hard. So I think when yeah. you decide to stop, you should stop and not go back into it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And you have the likes of Kalzaki who did everything yeah. he yeah. done and. You know, you don't even you don't even hear of him in the spotlight no more. He totally Boy, walked Boy, away Boy, from the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Too many fights, wasn't it? Mike Tyson yeah. back too many fights. I think yeah. when you're a legend you've got to just retire and stay retired. Yeah. So right, I'm gonna call it a day. So thank you very much, uh, Savannah. It's been an absolute pleasure, the biggest guest we've had, and uh, we'll get up there in April to see you, we promise you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks okay. for having me. I've enjoyed it. I've really yeah, enjoyed thank you. it. Thank you very much. If you need us any time, members here, just phone her and uh, oh, cheers. thank you very, very much for today. We'll have to get Thanks, Brian. The club. <laughs> Emma! <laughs> I don't turn them off. Can you do your side? Yeah. All right, I'll see you later. Hello. Exit the screen and then in the broadcast. Good, that one. It. It's really good. Yeah, really good.